What inspires both of you? Uh, what inspires uh, me or us, first is that knowing that there are families and there are many people who actually depend on us. That makes us wake up every morning thinking somebody somewhere depends on us. So I cannot sleep because there's a kid that will not go to school if I'll not work hard or work smart. And there are other families. Do you know, uh, before we came into the picture as Born for Adventures, in somewhere Kenyan coast, Diani, Mombasa, hotels used to close for low season. Between April and June, they used to close. When we came with the, when we came into the picture, we started doing uh, handling a lot of domestic tourism. Hotels from that time have never closed. They only close when they need to for renovation. Imagine we change the whole history of a whole area just because of coming into the picture. Welcome to Bonfire. Wow. Uh -huh. That's a huge office. Yes, 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 yes. I remember you guys started on a desk, eh? Yes, that time, 15 years ago. It was years just two ago. of you. Uh, yes, two years, uh, 15 years ago, two of us. And now? When you enter this office mm -hmm. and they see a number of people working for you guys, yes. how does that make you feel? Uh, we feel we feel humbled because it takes two to tangle, and it takes their effort is what has made us to be where we are. So we know it's a consulted effort. We we work as a team. So wow. all these guys here, uh, we are together working day and night to, to to be able to to achieve and for the company to be where it is. Actually, we like for me, I come here like once a month. So they take care of everything. So. How many offices now? We uh, have 10, uh, 10 branches, eight within Nairobi, two outside Nairobi. Uh, so now the next plan is to expand internationally, starting with Dubai, because it's our major uh, outbound destination. I, I heard Kenyans love going to Dubai. It's, it's okay. Awards, yeah? mm. uh -huh. oh. it, it's uncountable. Uh, which of the awards made you shed tears? Um, two, I think you'd say it's two. Mm -hmm. uh, first, there's the, the first time we won World Travel Awards. Yes. I couldn't believe it because for, for myself personally, mm. in school, I never received any award. I was not a top student. <laughs> like me. <laughs> he, he was the top three in their school. Top two. You know, I think people are hearing the success story of Bonfire Adventures, mm -hmm. but I wanted to know the lowest point of Bonfire Adventures. Uh, I, before COVID, we had gone to Victoria Falls. Yes, and the year... No Valentine, Valentine that year. It was 2019. 2020. We had gone to Victoria Falls. So we, we could hear there was some flu in China. So we didn't know where it was. We, we, we were thinking this is not for us. You know, normally when you hear there's a disease somewhere, you don't think it will. Then, after that, the skies were closed. You know, we could not believe. We thought it was a joke. Because in this age and era, we had never thought something would come and close the skies. The, the planes are parking, kept somewhere to park. Pilots go home. There's nothing to do. Some clients were in Dubai, uh, in other, uh, different parts of the world, and some could not be able to travel back. Yes. I remember it was the pressure that we had that particular time. We have never, and I don't think we'll ever had something. Imagine we had clients across, across the world, and skies have been closed. Handling those clients, some don't even have enough money. We have to take care of them in a way. Whilst they're living there? Yes. With the losses that we got through COVID, was too, too, too much. What did you learn from that? We, we, we learned that the world is very unpredictable. You never know. You never know of tomorrow, and anything can happen. Do you know we went losses of maybe between over $2 million or $3 million losses? 
you recovered those monies back yet? We, we, we recover as we progress. And sometimes in this business, the service business, uh, you have to develop a thick skin. The hospitality industry, every part is a moving part. And there's so much that is beyond anyone's control. There's so much that is beyond my control or your control. Mm. You, can, uh, so, so you, you can have someone, an airport closed in Santorini right now, and you have clients there. Mm. It's neither you are making or no, no clients making, but you have to solve that. Is the travel and tour the only business that you guys are running for at the moment? Or you are into other sectors? No, we are into other sectors, but hospitality being the main. You cannot put your eggs in one basket. Mm. Uh, so this is the mother company, but we are also like op uh, opening other, uh, what are they called? Hospitality related, uh, related uh, uh, industries like hotels, uh, something like that. And apart from that, uh, we are in manufacturing, we are in farming, and many other things. Our goal is to be able to supply food to feed the tourists in the hotels. Yeah, so we are doing a lot of fruit farming. We hope to farm all kinds of fruits, especially the exotic fruits. So I guess you guys are not just employing 500 people. <laughs> because if, if, if you guys are farming, uh -huh. definitely you have workers in the farm. Yes. If you guys are into the hotel business, you've employed people from the hotel business. I don't even want to ask how many hotels no, they no, have. It's good, it's good to see uh, that some, some people depend on an idea. That, well, so that makes you, keeps you going. You cannot relax because you know somebody somewhere depends on you. There's a kid who is going to school somewhere because of you, and you don't even know. There's a there's a nanny somewhere employed by someone who's who working. working, who that nanny has a kid somewhere who that kid depends on you. It makes you keep on going every day. You wake up, you know I have to work hard because of those those, and I don't. Even. Actually, for now, if we said we've shut down and we want to retire and sleep we would still survive, you know. But now we cannot do that because of all these people uh, depending on us. Will you say travel and tour business is profitable? Yes, because it has worked for us. And no, because it has still not worked for so many people. Actually, when we opened the business, so many, people, so many companies were closing down. Uh, it was after the post-election and then the Westgate thing. So a lot of travel agents uh, were closing down and that's the time we were opening. Yes, so uh, it dip but what I would say is that travel agency business requires balls, requires brains, requires a lot of hard work and also being smart. Dedication, persistence. You know, that to be persistent, passion, mm. it, it, it's so, it, it's a business that are every day, every day, many, many tours and travel companies open. And sometimes then, among all that, it requires a heart of God. Uh, what we did is that uh, most of the time, and why our clients uh, prefer um, Bonfire Adventures, because before we give you a package, first, we need to have sampled that package ourselves. Either ourselves or we said our team. Some places we are not able to reach because of time we said our team. So when we tell you we are taking you somewhere to Dubai, this hotel, most often than not, one, either one person at Bonfire or many people have sampled that. So we'll give you the correct. And another thing is that whatever we, give, we promise that we would the, we offer, mm. we offer that. Mm. When we tell you, we're able to take you this, we offer this, we offer this, that's what we offer. So people are able to trust us over a long period of time because whatever we tell them, we, 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 we deliver. What has been the major challenge that Bonfire Adventures have faced so far? Uh, the challenges I think that we yeah, face I mean. a lot, <laughs> many, among them, it is the, the human resource. What does that mean? It means that uh, as, as, as we have millennials or young people coming to, uh, to be the ones who are the workforce, mm. you find that sometimes we are not able to get uh, 
when they see us having fun in Dubai, they th yeah. think they apply for jobs and they think when they come to John Bonfire, <laughs> their, their work will be having fun. <laughs> When they come here and they realize it's a lot of hard work because we give them targets and they have to meet targets. Uh, we expect zero complaints to, from the clients they are handling. So it, the job requires a lot of hard work, it requires a lot of dedication, but we also reward them very, very well. So uh, a person understand, is this a person expect to be traveling, like, you know, to be traveling, yeah. but not some, to no, not to be sitting. Mm -hmm. Uh, making sure other people travel, you see, you see, because our work, <laughs> our work is to sit and make sure our clients travel. When, when, when you look back mm -hmm. to see where you've been now mm -hmm. and what you guys have been able to achieve so far, mm -hmm. how does that make you feel when you look back? We, we, we get humbled. We get humbled because uh, we, 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 we have seen that uh, with, with dedication, we, 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 with the, t the team supporting us to achieve the goal of the company, and with the go heart of God, we are able now to achieve a lot. And we feel humbled that this has been able to happen, and we thank God for it. I actually always tell people that uh, our, what I've seen with Bonfire, I know that success is possible. It depends with the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work hard to achieve your dreams. I've realized many people, like, they want to live my life, but if you tell them to what it takes, the work they need, the sacrifices they need to do to achieve those dreams, they are not ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you have to have the willpower to work hard. And success. It's not a one-time event. It's a progression. You have first to, at least to crawl as a baby, take the baby steps, even the, the company. Some people want to open a company and within six or three months, you want it to be like bonfire. It can never be possible. Do you guys have regrets? I think my major regret is not starting earlier. You know, like for me, my journey, I took so many other courses before I knew what I really wanted to do. So if I would have started tourism straight from Form 4, then I think I would even be further than, than we are. Can I tell you something? If you started earlier, you wouldn't have met me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I like to advise young people is that this is an internet era, a digital era. It's very, very tricky, not like before. Right now, people should know that internet never forgets. And like now, when we are doing interviews, do you know we have to do a background check even on your social media? And some people, you are not called for a, you are not shortlisted for an interview for the for an interview just because of what you write on your social media during your normal time. If you are those people who abuse people on your social media, however good you are, you might find, a lot, according to the company policies and core values, we might think this person cannot fit into our core values. You might lose an opportunity just because of how you write on social media. Do you know an email? Just an email can make you lose an opportunity. If your email is sweet16 at gmail.com, I'm giving you a, 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 something, uh, I'm giving you a deal of maybe uh, maybe a, a million do dollars. Do you think I would give and your email is sweet16 at gmail.com? I would think you are not, you are not serious. If, you are, if your social media out your put is an avatar, not your real picture. I think this guy, or you are, you are, you are, you are, or you, you, or your, your, your name on email on the social media, maybe you have written uh, Lucy Lucy. You know, I might not, I might think you are not as serious as, as it, it should be. So, guys, when you are doing whatever you are doing, just know that some people are watching and some things people might never forget. And people might go into history that might, might be an archive somewhere where people will be able to Remove it and tell you, is it you? Was it you who was telling people here they are not wise or they are, they are stupid? Was it you? How 
did both of you I mean put your differences aside to build one of the biggest or the biggest uh, travel and tour company in the whole of uh, East and Central <laughs> Africa? Uh, I think uh, what I've come to realize like um, they say two cannot work together unless they agree. Uh, so for us to run the company, I would say 90% of the things we agree. Maybe there's 10% of the issues which we don't agree. And that's where you have to say that uh, let's, let's go with his idea. Maybe he still has a point. Uh, sometimes he also m makes me like, let's go with your idea. Uh, maybe you have a point. So we've learned to give the other person a benefit of doubt. But of course, there are those mo moments where I feel if we go for this idea, maybe we'll make a loss. And he strongly feels this idea is a b big one. So there are moments where we have like agreed to disagree. So we also have that moment of agreeing to disagree i, I think I, I think what you, we we have all all agreed is that what is the objective ultimate objective is customer satisfaction it's the good company winning, company winning. and if everything goes towards towards that then you find it's it's easy for, for us now to agree because it makes us it, it makes us have that objectivity or objective and and we're able now to sail through all the other things is that who, who we are not in competition mm. we complement each other it's, i'm the ceo she's the md so uh, me being more senior she can say something and i say well and good it is good and i don't feel as if uh, I am less a person or my less a CEO. No, 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 no. Actually, that's uh, the one we once went for a meeting uh, in one of the hotels, and the guy told us that for me, if I would work with my wife, I think we would divorce the same week. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so shocked. I was like, then how do you live in the house? I don't understand. I could not understand. I hope people in the comment section can make me understand. But for me, I would not have a better business partner than him. And even the things that we try to do, like individually, they never do as well because we give each other motivation. We complement then each other. We complement. He has his strength. I have my strength. So when we co put them together, they form a very good cocktail. Yes. When we do a SWOT analysis on each other, mm. it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. How is bonfire impacting the society? Uh, there are so many ways that impact uh, the society as a private sector. Uh, first, there are some, some kids that uh, uh, we pay school fees for, uh, assisting our uh, kids to pay. We, we have in, at uh, different stages, starting from uh, lower primary to secondary school. And there are some schools that we support, schools, we support that's a different supporting the schools and paying the school fees those are two different things then apart from that uh, we we motive, we inspire and motivate train a lot of the young people some we put them uh, for internship at bonfire adventures and we're able to mentor them uh, up the land so, so that they're able to become and some have become good and uh, good people into the in, in the society then uh, 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 sometimes uh, we pick up like uh, some street kids and we nurture them and we, some we open for them some businesses and some we get for them some jobs in different places so that they can be able to be um, people who are able to take care of themselves in the society. Uh, so for those who want to join the travel business, I would like to tell you it's a very exciting career, especially the one, young ones who are in high school. You never choose this career. And let me tell you, it's a very rewarding career. And not only rewarding, it also gives you a lot of exposure to see things from another eye, uh, from different parts of the world. Actually, I would say it's to see things in different eyes. 
Uh, so like for me, out of travel, even when I interact with people, even my children, because they have traveled a lot, they're in another level. So it's an exciting career to, to be in. Uh, and uh, But I would like to tell you, it's not as rosy as it looks. When people look at us, they think our work is just traveling, whining and dining, and, you know, just enjoying soft life. No, we work so so hard the days i have slept in this office are countless i want to advise the youth especially uh, the boy child you know uh, these days i have seen an increase of the boy child who do not want to wake up and smell coffee wake up and work the boy child there's no option we have to wake up we have to roll our sleeves and we're going to work. As I said, success is not a one-time event. It's a progression. And boy child, if you want to get the best in this world, you have to go to work. If you want to get the best wife, if you want to get the best car, that means drive the best vehicle. If you want to get the best, be in the best house, you're going to work. And you should be patient. There's no success that is spontaneous. None. It has to be progressive. You have to wake up, crawl, stand, baby steps, walk slowly, start running, and achieve it. That is to the boy child. And with the internet, as internet never forgets, please make sure whatever you are doing, your parent can be, if a par your parent watches this, watches whatever you are doing or reads whatever you write, they can be comfortable. Just know that. If that is not the case, ask the few questions you can, can be able to ask. If it's not true, don't share it. On this note, I will say you guys, thank you so much for watching. And believe me or not, this is one of the best videos I've ever done. And all you need to do for me is to, first of all, like this video, share this video so that others can have a piece of this. My name is still Mr. Ghana, baby. You're one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.